So one of the most important ideas in either one of the titration curves that we're looking at is we need to know where we are at in our titration curve because the calculations that we do are dependent on uh, where we're at in our titration curve. So the first thing you want to do is, in this case, realize that we have added in strong base to our solution. So we're still dealing with our 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid. That's our weak acid. Um, and now we're adding in strong base. So there's going to be a neutralization reaction occurring. So the first thing I want to do is find out the number of moles of each of these species. So uh, the moles of acetic acid, that's molarity times volume. So I've given you the molarity volume is in milliliters, but we need to convert that to liters. We get that initially we have 5.0 times 10 to the minus third moles of acetic acid. Also here, we're adding in sodium hydroxide. We need to understand that there's a one-to-one -one, um, molar uh, stoichiometry between sodium hydroxide and hydroxide itself. So for every one mole of sodium hydroxide, we create one mole of hydroxide so we can understand that these two concentrations are going to be equal to each other. So I've given you information about the molarity of sodium hydroxide. Because this is true, this will also be the molarity of our hydroxide solution. So same deal, um, mol, uh, mole is equal to molarity times volume. We have the molarity given here. The volume is 15 milliliters, but we want that in liters. So now we understand that we have added in 1.5 times 10 to minus third mole of hydroxide. So then I want to take a second and say, where am I at in my titration curve? How we do that is by comparing the amount of added hydroxide to the amount of weak acid that we had initially. So because we have more moles of weak acid than we do of the hydroxide we've added, we are before the equivalence point. So we know we're not at the starting point because we've added in hydroxide, and now we have not reached the equivalence point because the number of moles of hydroxide is less than the number of moles of weak acid that we started with. So what we want to do now is find two things. How much uh, weak acid is left, or how many moles of weak acid are left, and then how many moles of conjugate base have we made? So the first one, the moles of weak acid that remains, well, we know how much we started with, 5.0 times 10 to the minus third, and then we understand that it's a, the stoichiometry is one to one during this neutralization reaction. So for, ev um, for every one mole of hydroxide I add, I use up one mole of acetic acid. So we know how many moles of hydroxide I've added. We calculated that up here. I then do a subtraction. I understand that for every one mole of hydroxide I add, I use up one mole of my weak acid. So if I start with this many moles of weak acid, I've added this many moles of hydroxide, this is how many moles of weak acid we have remaining. So this is our first piece that we need to find the pH right now. Also, um, you know, there might be some uh, conjugate base made by the, the initial um, equilibrium of our weak acid, but that's small compared to the amount of weak acid that we're going to be making during this titration, so we can just discount that. So the idea is the number of moles of weak acid, or excuse me, the number of moles of conjugate base we make is going to be equal to the number of moles of hydroxide that we've just added. So overall what happens is for one mole, for every one mole of hydroxide we add, we convert one mole of weak acid into one mole of conjugate base. So we know that the moles of acetate that are made are going to be equal to the number of moles of hydroxide that we've just added because it's converting. It's using up one mole of weak acid. So for every one mole of hydroxide we add, we use up one mole of weak acid and convert it into the conjugate base. So the number of moles of our conjugate base are going to be equal to the number of moles of hydroxide that we've added. And we found that number up here. So with this, we know that we have converted 1.53 moles of our weak acid into conjugate base. So these are the two numbers that we need. How, much mole, how many moles of weak acid are left over and how many moles of conjugate base that we've made. When we have these two, we can plug them into our henderson hasselbalch equation. So the pKa, we found that uh, up here. So it was given in our original question. We could find that from the Ka. Remember, this is the negative, the log of the Ka. We plug that into our henderson hasselbalch equation. And here with the conjugate base and the acid ratio, these can be molarity or moles. So you can see that this is really nice for us, especially in a titration curve, that we don't need to convert these moles back into concentration because one is divided by the other we can keep these in moles. 
So this is the number of moles of our conjugate base. This is the number of moles of weak acid that are left. I can plug those two numbers into my henderson hasselbach equation. So when we do the final calculation, we uh, realize that the pH is equal to 4.37 um, in this case.